The world of DIY is full of possibilities, and it extends to electrical DIY as well. But electrical DIY can get a little dangerous if you don't have the right safety equipment or don't know how the work is done. Here is a list of some common electrical DIY mistakes people have made so you can avoid them. Number 1. Cutting wires too short The first rule of DIY is to understand that everything you see in a DIY video online might not be as easy as it looks. In fact, a lot of hardcore DIYers usually discover that actually finding creative ways to do things for yourself is quite complicated, especially with potentially dangerous electrical appliances that need quite a lot of equipment to work with. But the good news is that when it comes to electrical work, most jobs are doable and don't require a lot of external help or experience. In fact, the average Joe could manage to learn and execute a great DIY electrical in no time, but it's still possible to make mistakes, and some electrical mistakes can cause physical harm, so it's always a good idea to be as careful as possible. Mistakes usually result in short circuits and can even lead to electrical shocks or dangerous house fires. So if you don't want your DIY to be the cause of a house fire, the first thing you need to learn is not to cut your wires too short. Cutting wires too short is one of the leading causes of short circuits which can lead to a house fire. In fact, the Electrical Safety Foundation in the United States noted that there are an average of 400 electrocution fatalities each year that happen as a result of electrical short circuits and malfunctioning appliances. Another report by the National Fire Protection Association backed up these facts and stated that since 2012, 18% of fires at home were caused by an electrical malfunction. So you can either leave all the electrical work to the pros, or you can learn how to safely DIY yourself through electrical work. The first thing you'll need to learn is how to cut your wires. If you're a first-time DIYer, don't forget that wire insulation has to be stripped off before you can cut it. When people don't strip off the insulation before chopping off the wire, they usually end up cutting the wires too short. That is dangerous because wires that are cut too short can cause poor connections in the circuit. This is definitely hazardous and also a ticking time bomb since a short circuit can occur at any moment. So here's a good rule of thumb for all aspiring DIYers. If you're cutting a wire, leave approximately 3 to 6 inches of wire from outside of the junction box. And if you still end up cutting a short wire, it's a good idea to use a push-in connector to splice in an extra wire for that connection. Number 2. Wiring connections that are outside junction boxes. Do you know how long electrical DIY has been going on? It's true that people have been trying to fix circuits and electrical appliances since their inception, but electrical DIY was first coined as an official activity around 25 years ago. That's right, this year marks 25 years since the Home Lawn and Garden channel started broadcasting. If you don't know what that is, the channel has been working to show aspiring DIYers how they can work on the things around the home. And even though it started off as a small home improvement channel, the Home Lawn and Garden channel has been helping people learn about the electrical circuits and appliances around them. And in just a quarter century, this channel has launched the careers of countless household DIYer names, and it also motivated a ton of people to start DIYing themselves. So it definitely spawned a whole generation of do-it-yourselfers. One of the first and most important lessons that this channel taught us about electrical DIY was the importance of junction boxes. If you want to be an electrical DIYer, you absolutely need to know what a junction box is. One of the major Major electrical DIY mistakes people make is ignoring the junction box in their homes. If you didn't already know, electrical or junction boxes exist to protect sensitive electrical wiring. They aren't located in every house and building just for show. In fact, these boxes exist to ensure that all connections are contained and protected from any external factors that might harm them. So they basically protect the wiring from all kinds of outside damage. They also keep sparks from loose connections in the circuit from igniting the drywall. So you have to acquaint yourself with a junction box and always make sure that your wires are protected at the connection point with this box. Number 3. Choosing a smaller junction box Another mistake that electrical DIYers tend to make when they're starting their DIY journey is selecting a smaller junction box. As you already know, junction boxes are important because they protect your wires and help reduce the chances of a big fire harming your home. But you can't just choose any junction box. In fact, you need to make sure that you're choosing the right box since electrical boxes come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. A great way to DIY your way through choosing an electrical box and reducing chances of error is to always select a box that is according to the exact number of wires you want to protect. Electrical boxes are divided into various sizes according to the number of wires that the box will need to protect. So if you put too many wires in a smaller box, you're increasing the chances of overheating. You're also increasing the chances of a serious short circuit in your electrical box that could even result in a fire. So a wise thing to do would be to choose a box 
device that has the proper volume for the number of wires it will be required to hold. If you go electrical box shopping, you'll notice that plastic boxes have the box volume stamped inside, and steel boxes usually aren't labeled. So if you're planning to buy a steel box, do some online research first. It's also a great idea to ask multiple salespersons about the kind of box that you want to buy. Doing things yourself might be fun, but to avoid mistakes that could lead to a fire, it's a good idea to accept professional help once in a while. Number 4. Not protecting your cables One of the worst mistakes you can make in the world of electrical DIY is to leave your cables unprotected. It's important to remember that just because your cable is inside a wall doesn't mean that it's safe from harm. Sadly, sensitive cables are always endangered by sharp objects that can harm the cable if you're working on the drywall. Examples of objects that can harm your cables through the wall include drywall screws that are unable to hit the stud, molly bolt anchors, and even the nails you hammer into the wall to hang pictures on. Did you know that hanging nails can nick the insulation on cables? This leaves sensitive wires exposed and also presents a huge fire hazard. And to fix this problem, you'll need a flexible plastic or sturdy metal conduit that will contain the wires in a quick and easy way. Number 5. Not installing a GFCI outlet correctly If you want to be an electrical DIY maestro, you need to know what a ground fault circuit interrupter outlet is. These outlets are an absolute must in bathrooms, kitchens, or any place that's near a water source. If you're wondering why this is necessary, a ground fault circuit interrupter outlet can potentially save your life by protecting you against lethal shocks. They do this by cutting off the power anytime they sense a difference in current. And this could even be a slight difference, but GFCIs work pretty well. The only catch is that they only work well when they're installed properly, but you have to make sure that you're installing it correctly. If you're installing a GFCI outlet without any professional help, you'll have to do it very carefully so that you don't make any mistakes. The first thing you need to do is keep your eyes peeled for two pairs of terminals. A GFCI outlet will always have two terminals, one for the line that is the source of the incoming power and the other one for the load. This is the terminal that provides protection in case of an electrical hazard, but if you mix up both of the terminals, the shock protection function won't work effectively. Remember, if you're already an electrician running your own business or just about to start and grow your own electrical business, you must learn the four critical things electrical business owners wish they had learned before starting an electrical business so you don't make the same mistakes. Electrician Accelerator have put together a free training video that you can watch right now that will show you exactly how to start, grow, and build your electrical business the right way so you can consistently guarantee profitable work, free up your time, all whilst reducing stress levels and allowing you to have a sustainable and more profitable business that works for you. In this free training video, you'll also learn how to generate a steady stream of jobs on demand and with predictability month after month in your local area without relying on word of mouth and referrals. How to stop competing on price with other electricians and escape your competition. How to convert at least 90% of your quotes and estimates into sales. And how to command premium prices and attract high quality customers that will be happy to pay more. Just click on the link in the description below the video. And with that, we'll end this video. Thanks for watching.